Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we've got a very, very cool species of snake and one of the most unique species of snakes out here in Southern Africa. It's the Savannah vine snake, Telothornis capensis. You can see how beautifully cryptically colored the snake is. Uh, it's busy doing its threat display now, sticking out its tongue, and it's gonna start puffing up its throat as well. And now these snakes are widespread throughout Southern Africa. These are the savannah vine snakes. There's four species of vine snakes in Africa. There's the savannah vine, the forest vine snake, eastern vine snake, and then the Usumbara vine snake up in Tanzania. So there's four species of these guys, but there is some form of integrated zones between the Eastern Mozambican vine snake and the Savannah vine snake. They do integrate naturally, so there's a lot of variation in certain areas where the integrate is happening, and there is a lot of variation within the head structure, color, as well as habits and behavior. So out of the four species, this is one of the most beautiful. The Eastern Vine Snake, Mozambicanus, has got a lot more green, emerald green on the head, whereas Otsia has got a little bit more of a dull green, and they occur in more Central Africa. That's Telotornis Kirklandi, and then we have Telotornis Usambara, which is up in Tanzania. Now you can see it's puffing up its throat and sticking out its tongue. That's a defensive mechanism. These guys are known to be called bird snakes, vine snakes, or twig snakes. They're very cryptically colored, perfectly adapted to hide in the savannah bush and scrubland. These guys also do quite similar movement than uh, chameleons do, with a little bit of a side head wind and bob during one, when the wind is blowing to give an inconspicuous look like it's a twig or a vine. And these guys are actually specialist hunters of chameleons, geckos, and will take the occasional bird if they get the chance it's a really, really well adapted species of snake and really one of the most beautiful species of snake. These guys have got binocular vision like a lot of vine snakes around the world. They've got a little bit of a depression in front of their eyes here, just like the Boomslang does. And they use that to be able to see stationary prey. These guys have got keyholes, so they've got vertical pupils, which allows them to be able to look in a specific direction, focus on a prey item, and then strike down and swallow them whole. These guys have got an extremely potent hemotoxin, similar to that of the Boomslang, except these guys have no anti-venom like for the Boomslang, which has a monovalent anti-venom. These guys are fixed rear fanged snakes, so slightly elongated rear fangs, so quite a lot longer, and it's actually one of the few extremely lethal venomous colubrids in the world. So normally it's your vipers and adders and elapids which are highly venomous. So for a colubrid to be this venomous, it's very rare. Bites from these snakes are very uncommon. Uh, they're non-aggressive snakes when they're up in the trees, etc. And when they're left alone, very rarely bite. And it's mostly keepers and handlers that get bit by these species of snakes. Now these guys can open their mouths quite wide at about 170 degrees to be able to inject a bite. So once you do get bitten by these snakes, unfortunately there's no anti-venom, so you'd have to go through blood transfusion and treat the bite systematically at hospital until the, the, the symptoms disappear. Due to their hemotoxic venom, it's an anti-blood coagulant, so you start bleeding out of every orifice, you start internal bleeding, and if left untreated, you can die. Really not a snake to be worrying about getting bitten by due to their habits, their camouflage, and not very often encountered by humans. You'll see them in and around gardens, etc., but very seldomly do they come into human houses and stuff like that. There's been toxicology studies done on these guys. Supposedly, Boomslang is the most toxic snake in Africa, drop for drop. But I did a little bit of research and read a couple of research papers. Living zoology, Mathieu is a herpetologist. He's completed his PhD, so he's a very knowledgeable gentleman. And he showed me a couple of things 
And believe it or not, supposedly these guys, drop for drop, have a far more evolved venom than Boomslang does. So if these guys were to have slightly larger venom glands and be able to have a larger yield of venom, I think that these guys would be a lot more toxic or are a lot more toxic than the Boomslangs are. So it'd be very interesting to hear what you guys have to say about the Boomslang venom versus the Twig Snake venom and how much more toxic the one is than the other. They're very shy, reclusive snakes, very rarely biting. You can see here, he's just checking me out. He's not even threat displaying anymore. So a really nice, calm, peaceful snake. Unless interrupted or cornered or feel it feels threatened, then it will start doing that defense posturing that we know very well. If you like this video, please do hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell. Stay tuned for the next species of reptile and amphibian we found out here in South Africa. And remember to stand for what we stand on. Yeah.